Okay, thank you for joining us another Chart Accountants Ireland Governance webcast. Today we are at the pleasure of being joined by Niall Gibbons. My name is Neil Fitzgerald. I'm the Head of Ethics and Governance in Chart Accountants Ireland. And we have Niall Gibbons, who is the Chief Executive of Tourism Ireland. Niall is responsible for overseeing the marketing of the island across the world. Among other things, he led Tourism Ireland's expansion into new markets, such as China and the Middle East. And he also developed groundbreaking partnerships with Lucasfilm and HBO, bringing both Star Wars and Game of Thrones to the island of Ireland. Niall is a business graduate of Trinity College Dublin. He's a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in Ireland. He also sits on the Irish government's Export Trade Council. He's a member of Culture Ireland's Expert Advisory Committee and an honorary fellow of the Institute of Hospitality in Ireland. Niall, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I want to launch straight in. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen, I'll beg your pardon. I'm going to launch straight in, Niall. Can't help but notice, but Charter Accountants Ireland and Tourism Ireland have one key thing in common, and that is we're both all island bodies. Therefore, I'm particularly interested in what is your experience and observations so far in the response to the crisis by the business community in both Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland. Well, thanks very much for having me today, Neil. Um, yeah. It's been an amazing, catastrophic time for our industry. And as you mentioned, Tourism Ireland is an all-island body established under the Good Friday Agreement over 20 years ago to promote the island of Ireland, uh, working together at North and South collaboratively. The um, issues around COVID-19 have had a similar and dramatic impact on the industry North and South. We've essentially seen um, all modes of transport uh, in and out of the country, effectively about 95% down from where they were this time last year. The hotel sector about 85% closed, restaurants 95% closed and bars all shut. So it's, it's a dramatic time. It's had an enormous impact on cash, on people's um, uh, jobs and livelihoods, uh, on people's uh, capacity to survive. Um, governments have moved quickly to react. And the, the, the good thing that we've seen is that there's been very good engagement. Our two ministers down here, Shane Ross and Brendan Griffin, have chaired a weekly meeting with industry sector heads and myself and my counterpart in Fulch, Ireland, and I'll be speaking with Diane Dodds, our Minister for the Economy in Northern Ireland uh, as well. So really, really critical and important time for our industry, but a very, very difficult one as well. It's very reassuring to hear, Niall, and I think it, it, it's well in keeping with the hashtag, all in this together. Um, so there's good, healthy engagement between government and yourselves, and obviously the industry itself, the hotels and all the restaurants, etc. cetera. Um, Niall, Last week we did, or, or recently we did a, a, an article and we also had a webinar where we had a number of different CEOs and board members share their kind of insights for how their organizations are responding in, in the current crisis. Um, some of their comments might have been um, or were um, of how it's important for boards to keep asking the right questions, uh, how, to get, how it's vital for the boards to keep engaged, um, how communication in terms with customers, employees, regulators is more important now as it is than ever. Um, can I just ask you whether you have any comments or whether you have any advice to perhaps board members out there in the hospitality sector specifically as to what they should be doing in the current climate? Sure, well, I think you know, our industry is one that's a people industry and uh, over communication is a good thing in the current climate. Uh, people need support, they've seen their businesses devastated. Uh, and there are going to be varying degrees of success and failure as we look out over the next three to six months. So it's important that uh, within the tourism industry, particularly, which comprises in excess of 20,000 small and medium sized enterprises, many of them mom and pop sized businesses, that people work within their sector specific areas as well. So, you know, being a member of the likes of the Irish Hotels Federation, the Restaurants Association of Ireland, the Income Tour Operators Association, the Irish Tourism Industry Confederation, there are lots of support groups that are out there that can help you survive through a crisis. It's important to have the right skills on the board, but of course, when you're a very small company, that's very difficult as well. Things like business planning, planning, cash flow management become very, very difficult. So it's really important that people work with their associations where there's great support, a great set of industry leaders uh, within the tourism sector who all do collaborate with each other as well. Uh, and I think the, the bottom line here as well is that while we're going through a very difficult time now uh, within Tourism Ireland, we're looking to the future and trying to send a message of hope there as well, that there will be light at the end of the tunnel. People will travel again and we'll be back on our feet with a very strong Ireland message abroad to encourage people to come here on their holidays when the time is right. 
a very optimistic note, Niall. Thank you for that. And you raise a very important point there is a lot of organizations, a lot of businesses in the tourism sector are actually small to medium sized organizations. They don't have the luxury of a board per se to fall back on. And you mentioned that they can fall back on trade associations. Anywhere else that you feel they can go for supports um, and, and, and I suppose a guiding light in, in, in a crisis? Well, certainly membership bodies like IBEC, uh, which we're a member, and also the Dublin Chamber of Commerce, which I was president last year, uh, offer really good support to members as well. So reach out to any of those networking type bodies uh, within your local area. Uh, it's really important that people don't stay quiet during a crisis because it can be an awful lonely place. And I think we learned that, especially during the global financial crisis 10 years ago, that people seek out and get support from whatever um, network or uh, trade association that they possibly can. Fantastic, Niall. And that can be support of any means. As we saw in a webinar recently, working at home does not mean working alone. And indeed, being in isolation does not mean you should remain alone. It's important for society to keep engaged. So for no other reason than that it is worth getting in touch with, with various advisors and these trade organizations. So Niall, you're very optimistic in terms of getting back on the road. Hopefully, we're in uncertain times, but I think a lot of commentators share the view that within a year, we should be back up and running again. What are your expectations? So, because I mean, the, the business world will undoubtedly be somewhat different post pandemic. I suppose, can I ask you twofold? What do you think the tourism industry might look like in Ireland, the UK post pandemic? And what do you think the business economy might look like in the ways of working, etc.? Post-pandemic. Well, that's a $64 million question, really. And it was very difficult to give you an honest answer. And I think we're better off being honest in this day and age. Certainly in our own space, we had an engagement with our ministers yesterday and started to talk about what recovery might look like. But right now it raises more questions than it answers, but that's not a bad thing to do either. We know that the consumer will certainly be very different to what they were earlier on this year. Uh, their appetite for international travel might be slow to return, but people will still want to book holidays. Which markets we go after and how soon we re-enter them has yet to be determined and we will conduct a large-scale research project. So it's important that we spend taxpayers' money wisely and that it's evidence-based and we'll be conducting research on, on COVID-19 and its impact on international travel and tourism over the coming six to 12 months. Secondly, the air access situation is precarious. About 85% of people who come to Ireland come by air and uh, we've seen a grounding of all craft and we've seen a few casualties, like, for example, German Wings last week, a subsidiary of Lufthansa was wound up, and there could be more on the way. So it's important that we continue to support air carriers and sea carriers that last year were bringing in, you know, in excess of 600,000 seats a week onto the island of Ireland. And we need to see that restored as soon as we possibly can. But that's going to be a longer term uh, issue. Thirdly, then, industry support is going to be very important because we have a great tourism industry that supports us really well abroad. They're going through very difficult times. So while I strike an optimistic note, it's, it's grounded in realism as well that not everyone's going to make it through here. And we just have to ensure that we establish good cohesion with the industry, that we have a very strong singular message about Ireland when we go back out to market abroad, and uh, hopefully within the next number of months. But tough times at the moment, and it's important that we continue to support uh, all the people in our industry particularly those people who may be vulnerable as well, uh, to support them because we will be back, uh, we will turn the corner and uh, there'll be an Ireland message out there as strong as ever, but not just right now. Fantastic. Thank you, Niall. And I guess, Niall, I suppose you have a very large, I'd imagine, global network uh, compared to, to, to the rest of us. Other countries, are they faring the same way? Is this, is experience is similar? Um, to some extent, but it's all been different timing. I've been dealing with coronavirus now since the 23rd of January when the first lockdowns occurred in China and we closed our office in Shanghai and we had a number of people we had to repatriate home and a number of people that were locked in their apartment for six weeks. Uh, we've also seen uh, the unfolding scenario in Italy uh, and countries like Spain where it's very difficult for our own staff who are seeing up to a thousand deaths a day now in the UK and uh, now happening in the US. So it's been, been moving around the world since the 23rd of January. And now restrictions are being lifted in China at the moment, somewhat lightened in Europe. Uh, and hopefully that's a good sign of things to come that we can see the same year happen uh, when the time is right, when the medical people advise us that it's appropriate to do so. But it's a, a tough and challenging issue for all of us uh, around the globe. Fortunately, with the technology that we have, we've been able to keep in touch with all the Tourism Ireland team from um, Auckland all the way around to New York. Uh, and everyone's safe and well, thank God. Niall Gibbons, Chief Executive of Tourism Ireland, thank you for talking to us today.